this is going to be an interesting comment section. You know you're not an INFJ when you got INFJ as your result on the 16personalities.com test. I couldn't resist saying that. Number two, you know you're not an INFJ when you have a deep understanding of your own emotions and you are always in touch with them. One of the drawbacks of being highly empathic is that it comes at the expense of considering, being attentive to, and simply living in accordance with your own feelings. Constantly being unable to feel settled, unless there's a sense of harmony, is very draining. Not least because harmony can be very fleeting, and constantly in need of being patched back together with a subtle and precise touch. Many people that you'll encounter in life actually love drama love conflict, and being a peacemaker in that kind of environment is a full-time job. Although extroverted feeling is an INFJ's second function, it's going to be the function that most people see them interact with the world through. This is further intensified by the fact that their top function, which is introverted intuition, is very complex, very abstract, and extremely difficult to explain and verbalize. Because INFJs are so perceptive about what other people want, they can definitely fall into being people pleasers, to the ignorance of their own wants and desires and emotions. My slightly calculating advice for INFJs would be to make sure helping other people also benefits you, or simply learn to be more self-focused, in the most positive sense of that phrase. You know you're not an INFJ when you love fast-paced, and highly stimulating environments. INFJs are intense, but in a very specific way. They are inwardly intense. Their mysterious inner worlds are constantly in motion, but they'll rarely be in your face or aggressive in the physical sense. In the same way, they will dislike and be overwhelmed by excessively stimulating environments, and they'll be prone to suffer from sensory overload, any environment that imposes upon them and forces some kind of action will be very annoying. It's not that they dislike or have a problem with taking action. It's that being compelled to constantly react is exceptionally draining for them. They have extroverted sensing as their lowest function, and types that have it as their top function, so an ESTP or an ESFP, actually love those situations and environments. It's possible why there's the stereotype of them being sports people. A football match, or kind of any sport really, requires you to react in real time and in the moment. Whereas INFJs and INTJs have the opposite function, introverted intuition as the top function, which is much less about the here and now and the concrete and the realistic. It's abstract, it's bizarre, and it often projects forward far into the future when making plans. INFJs, in a strange sense, are rarely living in the moment. You feel understood, and that people just get you. When you combine the traits and cognitive functions that have just been discussed in this video, the first function is introverted intuition, which is abstract and difficult to explain to people, making it difficult for INFJs to verbalize and communicate what's going on in their head. Then you have extroverted feeling, which is focused on other people's feelings, suppressing your own desires and inclinations in favour of group harmony. Then you have introverted thinking, which is detached and logical and systematic. Then they have extroverted sensing, but in the fourth slot, inferior position, which means that they're not adept at being present and being in the moment. How on earth do you get to understand someone with those traits? It's very difficult. Plus, INFJs are good actors. They can adopt personas when needed and are extremely convincing. However, almost everyone has the secret or not so secret desire to be understood on a deep level. And this applies to INFJs as well. But if you're going to try to understand them, then prepare for some detective work. Number five, you know you're not an INFJ when your door is always open. Okay, so the INFJ door slam has been discussed many times. In truth, 
and in practice I haven't really seen that trait necessarily play out. However, there is a trait I've noticed with people that have NI high in their function stack. If they determine that something or someone does not factor significantly into their future plans or their future in general, that thing or person can be dropped very abruptly. There was a period in my life where I play chess all the time. Way too much. I absolutely love chess. But it occurred to me one day that I'm never going to be a professional chess player. And it doesn't seem to be giving me that many cognitive benefits. And it was taking up quite a lot of time. So one day, I just decided to stop. And I think something similar may be happening with INFJs. Because of their extroverted feeling, they are willing to compromise and give people more than one chance. If someone repeatedly fails to take that chance, and an INFJ cannot see a future with that person, whether it's a friend or family member or spouse, I can see the door being slammed. As always, if I've forgotten anything or you feel like there's a big point that's been missed, then let us know in the comments. Also, if you've got to this point in the video, then you kind of have to subscribe. It's like the law.